Um, in the syndicate, I play the part of uh, Donna Armida Barracano, who is the wife of Anto, which is the part that Ian McKellen is playing, we're husband and wife. Last year, actually, a friend and I put on our own little two-hander in a very small, intimate space. Uh, so that was our kind of own homemade production, which was I, I, I was very keen to work like that. And uh, the last time I actually went on a, a commercial stage was, um, I think, about eight or nine years ago in a production called Picasso's Women. Well, I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm missing theatre. And also, again, it, we're, we're starting in a very small-scale theatre, and that appealed to me, and also, of course, working with Ian and Michael, Ian McKellen and Michael Pennington, whom I worked with years ago in the Royal Shakespeare Company. So it's a sort of coming home. The, the, the role of, uh, of women in this particular society, in Naples in 1960, is very traditional, even though obviously the 60s was the, 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 the great sexual revolution era. Um, it, this doesn't apply to this particular society within the Italian society. It's very conventional. I think, I think it's a very conventional Italian family. Anto has a particular rationale and code of honor and whoever is part of his family or part of his family of friends and associates respects that, doesn't challenge it and goes along with it because we truly believe that he knows best. Also, Donna Armida married him. He's considerably older than her. There's about a 25-year age difference. And she married him when she was about 18. So she has always looked up to him as a father figure. She's never had a life where she can really form her own opinions. So she's very happy for him to um, tell her how it should be and what to do and where to go. And she's, she's very comfortable with that. I, I do have Italian blood, yes, my, my father was Italian. He wasn't from that far south. My father was from a more northerly part of Italy, near Ubrino. Um, yes, I think it does help. And I've spent a lot of time in Italy as well. And I, 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 I do feel 50% Italian when I'm there. Yes, I do. This is a particular sort of um, snapshot of a period in uh, Italian society. It's, it's not how it is now. I mean, that we had someone come in who, who is Neapolitan, and we were talking about the different areas, the country house. We were talking about the Naples that the playwright is writing about, and she said it's changed massively, like, like the rest of the world. Well, that kind of, what is that phenomenon of reality TV that shows people pulling out all the stops to try and learn something beyond their comfort zone. Um, I, I, th I think that is one of the more interesting forms of reality TV uh, and kind of sets a good example of if you really put your heart and soul into something, you can actually get results. I think it's quite inspirational. Um, I enjoyed it tremendously. I really enjoyed it. It was also terrifying. I think it's one of the hardest, most challenging jobs I've ever done, actually. I do get nerves, and it, it, it's kind of, you worry if you don't get nerves. It, 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 adrenaline is a kind of necessary ingredient into giving, giving a performance. It's kind of part of it. Um, I was very nervous in, in that, and so was everybody else. And we all used to sit there in that little antechamber before you were kind of pushed off the, the high board, you know, in, into the, the public eye. We were all feeling so sick at that point. I can't tell you the level of nerves. I'm surprised we didn't have sort of buckets behind that sofa. <laughs> we were ill with nerves. I, I'm really very happy to have a career that I can do some film, I can work in television and theatre. Um, for a start, it means I, I work more than someone who is only specialised in one of those, and you have to have as many strings to your bow as possible in this profession. Um, and yes, it just it, it keeps it fresh, and there's always something to learn or be reminded of. And yeah, I love the variety. I, I really enjoy that. Well, the Royal Shakespeare Company was 
my one of the great goals in my life at that stage of my career. I was just beginning. I'd come out of drama school. I'd done some repertory work around the country, and I really wanted to get into the RSC. The standard of work was so excellent, and I felt that it was. Well, it's what it, it proved to be what I call the university, my, my acting university. Um, and I was fortunate enough to go there at a time when the, the company was incredible. It was composed of such an amazing group of actors. I worked with Judy Dench, Ian McKellen, Mike Pennington, Mike Grill and Bob Peck, Ian McDermott. I mean, it's a, it's a list of incredible talent. And plus the directors, because... Um, the directors are also Shakespeare scholars, but John Barton in particular, who taught me so much about how to unlock the text, how to get inside Shakespeare and really extract as much gold as possible that lies beneath what appear to be kind of gobbledygook lines for most people. What the hell are they talking about here? But he gave me so many keys to unlock the magic. And I'm really eternally grateful for that experience. I enjoyed it while I was working there and I did do a nice series and I really enjoyed working there because there's a wonderfully positive attitude that the Americans have and there's a very sort of, um, there's not a hierarchy, everybody's sort of on a level. If it, the writers occupy a building and, and as a person and a character in a long running series you can feel free, the doors are open to walk in, talk about your character, hey I've had this idea. It's a very open, free, positive energy which I really enjoyed. Um, they're far less reserved, you know. I think it's good for everyone to have to experience a bit of Americana, especially if you're English. It tends to open up the windows a bit and let some fresh air in. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if, it's, if we consider there's a dearth of good new playwrights or what, but there's an awful lot of um, revisiting popular playwrights. Um, we're having sort of Rattigan seasons and Simon Gray seasons and Stoppard seasons and Pinter seasons. So it's possible, um, yes, as directors and actors may feel like delving into Eduardo de Filippo's store of work. <laughs>